They can't be changed, you know, if something comes up and it's better, you know. Right? You know, uh, Tio used to be afraid to make a change, you know. Uh, and, I, and I would say, I told God to leave us and then leave him alone, you know. I said, why don't you leave Tio alone and let him do what he knows how to do, you know. And God said, well, we try not to bother him, you know. But now he's just getting like he should have been 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you say, what do I think of? Well, you know, I don't think one way or the other. I just say, yeah, well, there's another man. He used to be afraid to do things, you know what I mean? 
Can you ask him, man? I'm telling you, you know. I'm right. telling you where, where he used to be. Like he used to be afraid to just do things like he's doing now. Mm -hmm. I mean, now he'll do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, because he has the confidence. But then it was the job was the main thing, you know. And what would my wife say if this would happen and all that shit, you know? You know how guys are. No, you don't know nothing about that, do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me let me explain this about to you first. Sometimes when we would go, he was so nervous that he didn't want to go overtime. You understand? When we had like when we had the big band, and Gil used to write a lot of funny things, and he would say, I "Wonder why he did that?" You know? And I would say, "Don't worry about why he did it. Just record it." You know what I mean? Which used to piss me off. You know what I mean? Because Gil used to be, get up tight. Remember that, John? Mm -hmm. Gil used to get up tight and said, I can't stand Gil. You know? Because he, uh, like he's fine. But now he's different, you know? Mm -hmm. Now he's, a, he's an entirely different man. You know? It's just like a, a new man, you know? I like a new body. Right? I like it now. You know? You're right now. In fact, you know, when I when I make a date, I ask him about... I usually take Gil with me, or... And, and I ask Tio... I value his opinion. But I also know... When, the, when, the, when I ask him something and he says... His answer, I also know whether it's a Columbia answer or a musician answer mm -hmm. from himself. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or an answer that you just get in the habit of saying, being an A&R man with Columbia, mm -hmm. okay, you know? So that one I just throw away, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and then I ask him, I, I find out the one that's... Because it's always an answer. See, a and R man, guys that work for Columbia, mm -hmm. if you ask them something, they'll give you, the first thing they'll do is do like this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What you in there ignore, you know, that's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. some company shit. Mm -hmm. Cool, soothe the artist, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then, like you say, uh, is that long enough? You say, uh, well, uh, it's long enough, but I think you, it's long enough, cause, right? but I think you should do it again and uh, play a little longer. You know what I mean? I mean, what you, what you could have said, no, it isn't long enough, and it sounds funny. You know what I mean? In front. So that's what I interpret that as. I just say, well, it, it isn't long enough and it sounds funny, so I'll do it up again. <laughs> oh, I, that's where I come in. If I do something, I hear a feeling it's there, you know, I won't do it all. You know? I mean, I'll tell them to save it, and I might do it over if it isn't too much. Some things you just can't do over. Mm -hmm. Like we did it in a, a silent way. We didn't do that but once. Cause you can't do it with saying like that. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, your smiles in the sky and uh, uh, the daughter of Kim and Joe seem to do the very good and uh, record and we put out. <coughs> uh, you see, uh, you, can you talk about? Uh, any difference or anything about these two albums musically? Or your new new album in a silent way? I don't know what to say about those albums, you know. But in a silent way, they all seem old to me, you know. Hmm. They seem like they're about 15 years old. Hmm. So, what makes you think so? Because it's, it's, 
It's a nice way to play, you know, but uh, it's something else happening. Something in your mind. Something in your soul. Now. No, I, no, I'm saying those albums, Miles in the Sky. Mm. I couldn't play like that anymore, you know. Mm. And uh, Kilimanjaro, I couldn't play that. Mm. Because the way we play now, we don't. I mean, that's, that's, that's like commercial music, like Miles in the Sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now it's, it's all incorporated in something else. It's mm -hmm. more freedom time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. But that, that, that'll sound different when we play it in person. If we play it. See, all those things, when you, when you play in a studio, it's, mm. it's kind of down, you know? <laughs> when you play in person, it's something... <laughs> when you play in person, something uh, happens. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because you anticipate... Yeah. yeah. It's different. Uh, the, the, a record says it's just like plastic thoughts. Mm. It's nothing, mm. you know? Nothing, you know. Mm. I mean, we're lucky. I mean, it's the East. I'm lucky if I can even listen to one of the records. You never listen to your records. You play each chord. It's so bad. I mean, it's no feeling on most of them. But what, what else can we do? We just when we 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 would like to listen to mass music, and you know, all we got is the records. But you 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 see you when you make a record, you always thinking about, well, we'll have to stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when you play in person, you don't have to stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the guys who are sitting there come just to record. I mean, it's a commercial venture, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you play in person, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like food, you know? You you, you, you feel the same way uh, about me in a silent way too? Well, in a silent way, this is this was just one style of playing, you know. But if we play it in person, it'll be different. Mm. The notes will be longer. Mm. These certain dy dynamics come out, mm. and there'll be certain little extra trills and open mm -hmm. sound that you that you can hear mm -hmm. before you get to them, you know? And when you play them, they'll be pro more pronounced or more open because you, you can feel something, you know, mm -hmm. on the band mm -hmm. and, and an audience, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, and <laughs> I mean, it's just different. Yeah, this is a very interesting. You know the Glenn Gould, the serious classical pianist? He got the nickname for the Alpha Dropout. He doesn't believe he's giving concerts. The only record. What? Oh. It just has to give a concert. Maybe in a... Well, that's what he said, the reason to say that in a concert, he has to sometimes exaggerate but what he really has to play when you play the bar, you see, in order to reach the audience in the back and he has to exaggerate the tones or the exaggerate the notes. He doesn't like that. He, he wants to play in a, in a, in a small studio so that he can really play Bach as, as Bach might have played his own music so that all these mechanics then you only have to record it once. Mm -hmm. Let somebody else do it. Mm -hmm. Why well, keep recording it over and over again? Mm -hmm. But I, you know, uh, when you when you uh, play like that, it's like driving a car. You know, mm -hmm. when you can drive a car like to Philadelphia at night, and you can. You can get there, you know, without much trouble. Mm -hmm. 
If you're driving in the daytime and the people are distracted, you can miss turns. You know, if he's playing bomb, the people might distract him. You know, I mean, even out of the corner of your eye, you know, somebody might might do like this. You know, but if you have to, you can do through the people there. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you, you go off your thing, you know what I mean? If you read, somebody can distract you, you know? I mean, you can drive with nobody on the street and get all the turns, you know? But when you're driving, it's crowded, you miss a turn. I don't know why. You can do the same thing over and over again, but if it's crowded, you ever notice that, Jack? The guy's reading music in front of someone, you know, no matter how well he knows, you know, you just mess it up, you know. His rhythm won't be the same. That's the reason I believe in recording live. Because it's up now. May I get back to the Sina Silent Wait album? Uh, you use the electric piano here. Uh, I, I think that you used the electric instrument for the first time. And we used it on our modern account. Yeah. And you know the Kilimanjaro. Oh, yeah. You used it in the Kilimanjaro. We used it in a modern account, a song called Stuff. Yeah. But this one is, this is three pianos. Mm. And uh, we, we got this, we got this uh, shellac uh, with it from a CD uh, from a week ago when we did some of that in the past. Did you like it? Yeah. Well, then, I mean, uh, it's in a silent way. No, oh, good. Oh, we had yeah, two of those. Is this a hot dog? No, oh, this is a new dimension. Now my started to to be in another dimension again, you see. Because we Japanese friends, we look at you, in, uh, we have observed you go into new dimension again and again in the past years now. I, we consider this is another new dimension that you're going in. Well, you know, the, the way I did that, the reason I did it is because when you write music, you actually had live when you write, you know? And you in your head it's twenty different ways. Mm. Right? So if I get three pianos, mm. they'll play it twenty different ways. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. The sketch I make for them to play makes them play it all the ways that you would possibly think about writing. Mm. You know, all the voices. Mm. You know, you don't have to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mm -hmm. times. Mm. They'll just do it. All you have to do is write the symbol, the lead note you want, and the rhythm. And give them the idea. And you'd be surprised if they play it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. change it. Especially if you have guys who think that way. You know, you can't get a guy just in the ordinary decision. You have to have Herbie and Joe and some other teacher and Chick. That's me in the town right now. But now Chick is playing like that by himself. <laughs> Isn't it just? He plays like that by himself. He just plays it, you know. And mm. There's no certain thing they play now. They just play everything all at once. You might not like that. Huh? We play. We play four tempos at once. You know, mm -hmm. like you can hear. A t you can hear a, a tempo, but you also can hear another one. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. within. The, Mm -hmm. Within yeah. the other one, and you can either play on that one or that one. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is doing mm -hmm. something else. You know. And it's on your old question. It's not. Can you hold on? Can you name any composers? 
And, uh, you know, I like Stravinsky. You know, I just, I listen to, to all the composers, but, you know, I always come back to Stravinsky because he does more for me, you know, rhythmically than most of the composers. He writes that way, you know. Yeah. And I like, uh, I like Rachmaninoff for, for, see, Stravinsky just writes sound, you know what I mean, which that knocks me out, you know, just things, you know, and no form, you know. For Rachmaninoff, I like Rachmaninoff, the form, he is. Sean Berg, I went through that. Berg, I like Berg. But they only write one once, you know. You guys like he, but they did. He did his college, you know, and that's and everything else. After that was nothing. Benjamin Britten did Peter Grimes, and that was it, you know. The uh, blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, they sound all right, you know. And what makes them what makes them great is that they're they're white. The white people uh, cheer them on, you know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Their father is all white, mm -hmm. and the white kids support them. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, they support them and they come and see them, and they and they they, they have white idols. You know what I mean? But uh, the black kids don't do that. I was telling my my wife the other night because they they need they either have to have it in school like a personal appearance course, you know, where they where they, where they tell them to go out and see different people. You know what I mean, Jack? Because they don't go go enough, you know. And if they do go, I mean, I think the reason they don't go is on account of the police. Not that they're afraid of the police, but why go and be bothered by the police just because you're black and have one of the shiki or unnatural, you know? So you won't see 9,000 black kids to see blood, sweat, and tears, you know? And you also won't see them See him listening to uh, Sly and the Family Stone unless they're uptown, you know. And all of them, you might see 30,000 people listening to them, you know. Because there's familiar surroundings, but they won't go out. Like, they won't go to uh, Randall's Island to hear. Uh, maybe Randall's Island or Jack. But not the. Not the auditorium, not the, not the, uh, Madison Square Garden, you know, because they just, they like Japanese people, you never see them out, unless you go down there and perform, you know. I don't like it, man, because when I look in the club and I don't see my people and I'm black, I feel funny, you know, because that's where I got the talent from. Thank you very much.